Hi guys, I have another Junie B. Jones book for us. Today's book is called Junie B. Jones and the Little Monkey Business. Let me read you the back. It's pooey on babies until Junie B. Jones finds out that her new baby brother is a big fat deal. Her two bestest friends are giving her everything they own just to see him. And guess what else? Maybe she can bring him to school on pet day. So you already know Junie B from our last book, The Stupid Smelly Bus. What I want you to do while I read this book is to think about who she is as a character so you can use that to help you make predictions on what you think she might do in this story. So knowing Junie B Jones, I'm thinking that she's gonna try to bring her brother to school and he's not a pet, he's a baby. And I think that's not a good idea because babies and pets are different. I think she maybe she's gonna get in trouble. Maybe she's gonna be mad that she can't bring him to school. Let's see what kind of trouble she gets in. Chapter one, surprise. And she looks like this. It does not look very happy. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, that's all. B stands for some, B something stands for something else too. B stands for baby. Only I'm in kindergarten, but I already know how to spell baby. B-A-B-Y. That's because my mother told me that she is going to have one of those things. She and daddy told me about it at dinner one night. It was the night we had stewed tomatoes, which I hate very much. Oh, so that's the picture that I just saw of her. She's eating stewed tomatoes and she doesn't like them. Daddy and I have a surprise for you, Junie B, said mother. And so then I got very happy inside because maybe I didn't have to eat my stewy pewy tomatoes. And also sometimes a surprise means a present. And presents are my very favorite thing in the whole world. I bounced up and down on my chair. What is it? Is it all wrapped up? I don't see it, I said very excited. Then I looked under the table because maybe the surprise was hiding on there with a red ribbon on it. Mother and Daddy smiled at each other, and then Mother held my hand. So here she is looking under the table at dinner. Junie B, how would you like to have a little baby brother or sister, she said. I made my shoulders go up and down. I don't know, maybe, I told her. Then I looked under my chair. Guess what, I said. I can't find that silly willy present anywhere. Mother made me sit up. Then she and my daddy said some more stuff about a baby. The baby will be yours too, Junie B, Daddy said. Just think, you'll have your very own little brother or sister to play with. Won't that be fun? I did my shoulders up and down again. I don't know, maybe, I said. Then I got down from my chair and ran into the living room. Bad news, fellas, I hollered very loud. The present isn't in this dumb bunny room either. You see what's happening with Junie B? She doesn't understand that it's not a surprise, a present. The surprise is that her mom and dad are gonna have a baby. Mother and daddy came into the living room. They didn't look smiley anymore. Daddy took a big breath. <sighs> there is no present, Junie B, he said. We never said we had a present. We said we had a surprise, remember? Then mother sat down next to me. The surprise is, is that I'm going to have a baby, Junie B. In a few months, you're going to be a big sister. You're gonna have a baby brother or a baby sister. Do you get what I'm saying? Just then I folded my arms and I made a grumpy face. Cause all of a sudden I got it, that's why. You didn't get me a darn thing, did you? I said very growly. Mother looked angry at me. I give up, she said. And then she went back into the kitchen. Daddy said that I owed her apology. Apology is when I have to say the words I'm sorry. Yes, but she owes me apology too, I said, because a baby isn't a very good surprise. I made a wrinkly nose. Baby smell like P.U., I explained. I smelled one at my friend Grace's house. It had some spit up on its front. And so I held my nose and I hollered, P.U., what a stink bomb. And then that Grace made me go home. After I finished my story, Daddy went to the kitchen to talk to Mother. Then Mother called me in there, and she said, if the baby smells like a stink bomb, she will buy me my very own air freshener, and I can spray that can all by myself, except not on the PU baby. I would like the one that smells like fresh as a Carolina pine forest, I said. Then me and Mother hugged, and I sat back down at the table, and I finished eating my dinner, except not my stewy pewy tomatoes. And so guess what? No dessert, that's what. 
But she doesn't sound very excited to have a baby brother or sister. But it doesn't sound like she's in any trouble for it. So let's see what's going on next. Chapter two is called The Dumb Baby's Room. I know that if she says the word dumb, I think she's going to get in trouble for that. Mother and daddy fixed up a room for the new baby. It's called a nursery, except I don't know why, because a baby isn't a nurse, of course. The baby's room used to be the guest room. That's where all our guests used to sleep. Only we never had many guests. And so now if we get some, I guess they'll have to sleep on a table or something. The baby's room has new stuff in it. That's because mother and daddy went shopping at the new baby stuff store. They bought a new baby dresser with green and yellow knobs on it and a new baby lamp with a giraffe on the lampshade. And also a new rocking chair for when the baby cries and you can't shut it up. And there's a new baby crib too. A crib is a bed with bars on the side of it. It's kind of like a cage at the zoo. Except with a crib, you can put your hand through the bars and the baby won't pull you in and kill you. And guess what else is in the nursery? Wallpaper, that's what. The jungle kind. With pictures of elephants and lions and a big fat hippopot or something. And there's monkeys too, which are my most favorite jungle guys in the whole world. Mother and daddy pasted the wallpaper on together. She sounds like she's excited about the room. Me and my dog Tickle were watching them. This wallpaper looks very cute in here, I told them. I would like some of it in my room too, I think, okay, I said. Can I, can I? We'll see, said daddy. We'll see is another word for no. Yeah, only that's not fair, I said, because the baby gets all new junk and I have all old junk. Poor Junie B, said Mother, very teasing. Then she bended down and tried to hug me, only she couldn't do it very good because of her big fat stomach, which is where the big stupid baby is. I don't think I'm going to like this dumb baby, I said. Mother stopped hugging me. Don't say that, Junie B. Of course you will, she said. Of course I won't, I talked back because it won't even let me hug you very good. And anyway, I don't even know its stupid dumb name. Then mother sat down in the new rocking chair and she tried to put me on her lap, only I wouldn't fit. And so she just holded my hand. That's because daddy and I haven't picked a name for the baby yet, she's explained. We want a name that's a little bit different. You know, something cute like Junie B. Jones, a name people will remember. And so I thought and thought very hard. And then I clapped my hands together really loud. Hey, I know one, I said very excited. It's the cafeteria lady's name at my school and her name is Mrs. Guzman. Mother frowned a little bit. And so maybe she didn't hear me, I think. Mrs. Guzman, I hollered. That's a cute name, don't you think? I never remembered it too. Even after I only heard it one time, Mrs. Guzman sticked right in my head. Mother took a deep breath. Yes, honey, but I'm not sure that Mrs. Gusman is a good name for a tiny baby. And so then I scrunched up my face and I thought and I thought all over again. Hmm. How about Teeny, I said. Teeny would be good. The mother smiled. Well, Teeny might be cute when the baby is little, but what would we call him when he grows up? Big Teeny, I called out happy. The mother said, we'll see, which means no big Teeny. After that, I didn't feel so happy anymore. When's this done bunny baby getting here anyway, I said. Mother frowned again. The baby is not a dumb bunny, Junie B, she said. And it will be here very soon. So I think you better get used to the idea. Then her and daddy began pasting wallpaper again. And so I opened the new baby dresser with the green and yellow knobs. And I looked at all the new baby clothes. The baby pajamas were very teensy weensy. And the baby socks wouldn't even fit on my big piggy toe. I'm going to be the boss of this baby, I said to Tickle, because I'm the biggest, that's why. Daddy snapped his fingers at me. That's enough of that kind of talk, Missy, he said. Missy's my name when I'm in trouble. After that, him and Mother went to the kitchen to get more paste. And so I looked down the hall to make sure he was gone. Yeah, only I'm still going to be the boss of it, I whispered. So, ha ha, there. And there they are in the nursery getting ready for the baby's room. So the next chapter is called A Very Wonderful Thing. I'm wondering if this means that the baby's going to be born. I'm sure the parents think that's going to be a very wonderful thing. But still don't know about Junie B. She sounds like she just wants to be the boss of that baby. She just wants all the baby's stuff. See you tomorrow, guys. Keep up the good work. Bye.